Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and happy new year to those in certain time zones or if you're watching in 2022. I wanted to wrap this year up with all of my favorite manga reads of 2021, so I'll be sharing eight of my favorite series this year with multiple different genres included. And just as a reminder, these are all of my personal opinions, but if I missed any of your favorite series, please leave them in the comments down below for others to enjoy and for me as well. So for each series, I'll be giving a short plot introduction before talking about my own thoughts as I read the series. And there will be no spoilers at all in this video, so please try and keep the comment section relatively spoiler free. So let's just go ahead and dive straight into this list. The first series I wanted to share is no surprise to a lot of you, and that is Blue Flag. Blue Flag is a coming of age romance school life series that revolves around three main characters. We first learn about Tai Chi, a quiet senior high schooler who's just trying to stay out of everyone's way. He has a childhood friend who is extremely popular at school named Homa, who is another main character. These two used to be close, but they started to drift apart in high school. Our third main character is this shy and clumsy cute girl named Futaba who is insecure about herself and aspires to grow out of her shell and change. She deeply admires Toma because of his outgoing and free personality and actually develops a crush on him and Taiji ends up helping her get closer to him. However, as they go about this journey, the three of them grow extremely close and because of this, they start to have trouble navigating through their deep and intricate emotions and conflicts with each other. So overall, this is a beautiful story about love, growing up, and friendship. So at first it seems like your basic love triangle with these two kind of opposing personality male characters and a shy female character that these two are chasing after. But I can tell you now that that is the farthest thing from what Blue Flag is. Each character has their own worries and they're all trying to grow in the chaotic environment that is their high school. And over this series you get to learn so much about each character and I truly came to love and root for each one. And in this series, there are so many issues, but overall, there's no inherent right or wrong, which makes it so much more interesting to go through and see what each character thinks, and it also makes the ending so much more worthwhile. So when I was reading this series, I remember closing the book several times to take a deep breath after either an intense segment or a groundbreaking moment in this series. So this story is lighthearted at first, but it gets real deep into overwhelming emotions near the end of this series. I really couldn't put down the last several volumes and read them straight through in one sitting because of how well the story flowed. It's hard to describe this story without too many spoilers, but I truly believe that this series is worth the time and effort you put into it. It's completed with 8 volumes total, making it a medium length series that doesn't feel too long, but I do feel however that it was a bit short. The ending was kind of rushed compared to the pace of the beginning and the middle of the series. But other than that, if you're at all interested in romance series in a school setting that dives deep into relationships and growing up, this is the one. I highly recommend checking it out even if this series is not, you know, your cup of tea or it doesn't seem too enticing at first. But overall, this is one of my most enjoyable reads this year. Next up is a more lighthearted but also romance series. I promise that later on there are many other genres that I touch upon, but I just wanted to stress how much I love Tomo-chan as a girl. So for those who have watched my past videos this past year, you guys know how often I talk about this series to the point where everyone in the comments um, were like, it's kind of surprising how you're not talking about this series. True, <laughs> that is very true. So obviously I had to include this series in this list. So Tomo Chan is a Girl is an incredibly comedic romance school life series. Tomo and June have been best friends since they were children. However, they bonded over martial arts, games, and fighting, and trying to kind of like one-up each other. And one small moment when they were children where June asked Tomo why she was going into the girl's bathroom, that kind of scarred Tomo forever. From then on, they existed in a state where June didn't really see Tomo as a girl, or Tomo didn't get that vibe from him. But despite this, Tomo really likes June and has even confessed to him, but June actually brushed her off being like, bro, of course I love you too, you know, bromance. Um, but yeah, so this is the story of these two loving characters. The story's format is a bit unique in that it's a four coma. Each page is in a comic strip format of four equally sized panels. And so each page was posted per day on a Twitter account when this series was publishing. So therefore each page kind of has its own theme and small storyline that weaves in really well together when it's in volume format. So there are no weird cups or jumps in the story that make it confusing to read. There are eight volumes in this completed series, but each volume is much shorter than a regular volume just because there are less panels and less overall dialogues. 
So this is really such a quick and relaxing read. I truly, truly recommend it. I read the entire thing in one day and couldn't stop thinking about how cute um, the entire story was. And I really wish I could reread this for the first time to experience all the joy and the giggles I had during my first read. So any fan of comedy, romance, or just some short series or anything cute, this is the series to read. <laughs> This next series is very different from the past two that I was talking about, and this one is actually a mystery horror series that I was absolutely obsessed with in the first half of 2021, and that is Ajin. Ajin revolves around this newly discovered immortal demi-human species. These demi-humans were deemed to be acceptable, living together with humans, but they are still being caught and used in extremely inhumane experience due to their immortality by the entire government. So Kay, a normal high schooler who aspired to study medicine, gets hit by a car one day. He dies, but then he revives and realizes he's turned into a demi-human, or he has been one all along. So immediately the government is out to get him and Kay runs across the country to survive. He encounters other people like him and other groups of demi-humans, but he's not really sure who is there to help him and who is there to sabotage him or even turn him to the government. So this completed 17 volume series is pretty psychological, but that's what makes it so mesmerizing and addicting to read. The art is on another level and plays into these psychological elements. Each page is slightly unsettling, and the images of demi-humans are so absurdly creepy. But besides these aspects, the action part is insane as well. The series is packed with action that is wonderfully drawn and leaves you imagining the animated scene in your head. And keep in mind, I have not watched the anime yet, but I can still have a very vivid picture of all the scenes and the world that Ajin is placed in. The characters here are so unique and real too. Despite the overall story and premise not being relatable, the the underlying emotions and motivations of these characters resonate a lot and are so critical to the story. Each character is so carefully woven into the series and throws you into an existential crisis because the situation of the story makes it sometimes difficult to support characters, but somehow the series manages to do that nonetheless. The facial expressions, the dialogue, the storyline, and just about everything in the series connects to form a dark, deep, and memorable experience. Any fans of thriller and mystery, you have to check this one out. Alright, so next up, going back to a more lighthearted note, this next series is a series that shook the world earlier this year, and that is Spy Family. So this is a comedic action series about our main agent, Twilight, who needs to pretend to have a family for his next mission. So this agent ends up adopting a seemingly normal girl named Anya to pretend to be his daughter. Anya is essential to the mission, as the mission involves investigating a politician whose son goes to an elite prestigious academy. So obviously, Twilight needs Anya to get into this academy for his mission. As for a wife, Twilight ends up bumping into this normal office worker named Yor, who needed a pretend boyfriend to not embarrass herself in front of her co-workers. But turns out, Yor is actually a secret assassin who is highly skilled and actually named the Thorn Princess. So it seems like Anya is the only normal one, but you are wrong. <laughs> Anya actually has mind reading powers after people conducted experiments on her. However, none of these three interesting characters really know the truth about everyone. The closest one to knowing the truth is Anya, who is just impressed and happy to be with her adoptive parents, and so she doesn't really care what their occupation is. This story tells the hilarious journey of an adorable family that's just trying to balance their life shenanigans with their own personal motives. So this is an ongoing series that came out in 2019 with the sixth volume, um, English volume being the latest. I've had so much fun reading this series this past year. It's not only action-packed, but so cleverly hilarious with its punchlines and subtle comedy. While managing to do all this, the series has an incredible driven story plot that fills each page and chapter with so many obstacles and fun moments. All the characters are so charming and so funny in their own ways, and I hope the way that I described them to you guys uh, really justifies them. But you guys will have to read it in order to find out. Overall, I highly recommend this series to everyone and anyone. I don't think anyone will think this is a boring series or regret picking this up at all. So definitely please give this one a try in 2022. Our next series brings us to the shoujo realm. Um, and this one I loved so, so much this year, which is Daytime Shooting Star. This is a romance comedy school slice of life series completed with 12 volumes. It follows the story of a high school girl named Suzume who moves from the countryside to Tokyo after her parents went overseas for work. 
Suzume moves in with her uncle and meets this one man who's kind of mysterious in the beginning named Shishio, who turns out to be her teacher. As they get closer, she starts to develop a crush for him as he's always there to help her out. However, another character appears, Mamura, who grows closer to Suzume as they are classmates in the same class throughout the series. To sum it up, the series is an intense and heart-aching love triangle between these three characters. At first, I was hesitant to start this series because I tried to steer away from teacher-student relationships just because it's kind of not too okay in the real world. However, the series touches upon the subject in such a realistic and non-weird way. Suzume develops a crush on this supporting figure, which is very common and struggles with dealing with these emotions and her true feelings towards him. Shishio, the teacher, also struggles because he knows that he cannot reciprocate these feelings. So there are boundaries that are set in the story that make the overall premise more realistic and acceptable. And earlier today, I saw a review on Mal that expressed what I felt in such great words. This story is deceptively simplistic in the beginning, but turns out to be much deeper and thought out. The series is just so beautifully written and I teared up near the end of this series because of the growth each character makes and the reality of their situation. There's heartache, sadness, yet there's also happiness, joy, a lot of firsts and love. I just enjoy this series so much, so much so that it's currently my favorite shoujo series of all time. And the title of this series, Daytime Shooting Star, will make so much more sense to you as you read this series. So yeah, overall, if you're at all into shoujo or any romance at all, I recommend this series with all of my heart. Next up is a series of pure straight comedy that I've come to love so much this year. And this series is called Grand Blue Dreaming. So this series was my safe haven in school, and I came back to rereading certain volumes because they were just so, so funny. So this series begins with our freshman college boy named Iori Kitahara, who moves to the seaside town to begin his college life. He moves into his uncle's diamond shop, Grand Blue, where he meets a bunch of cute cousins, but also meets the most chaotic group of upperclassmen who seem to never have any clothes on. He gets pulled into three nights of heavy drinking and shows up to class naked three days in a row. And that's the hilarious start of Eerie's college life. So these upperclassmen recruit him and a few other interesting freshmen into their diving club and they get to try out diving for the first time. Despite the partying that happens every few pages of the series, you do get to learn a bit about diving and what it's like throughout this series. So in the series, there is no underlying deep conflict nor obstacle that these characters are facing. A majority of the series is just fun and laughs, but this is what I love about it so much. These college students are absolute monkeys and dorks and they're so absurd. It makes me reminisce about my college days even though I'm still in college. It transports you to a state of college youth and fun no matter what your background or age may be. As for comedic effect, this series is probably the funniest thing I've read since One Punch Man. I thought OPM was hilarious, but this is on a whole nother level. I don't even try, but I end up bursting into cackles when I read this. And the series is still ongoing, so I really can't wait to see what happens next, and I'm so happy that there's still more to read. Overall, such a nice way to relax, and this comedy hits really no matter how many times you reread it. I brought one volume of Grand Blue to school, and I reread that thing every week, so I highly recommend this series overall. All right, I feel kind of cruel for putting this one right below Grand Blue since this next series is a tragic, dramatic love story. I feel like a lot of people don't try out this series because the title is a bit weird, but this next series is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. To give some context to the title, the story is told from the perspective of a male high school student who isn't named until later on in the manga, so I'll leave that part for you guys to discover. This male student ends up finding the diary of his popular and outgoing female classmate, Sakura Yamauchi, at the hospital. Sakura tells him that she has a terminal illness that is pancreatic cancer and that she only has a few more months to live. Our male student is the only one to know of her condition besides her parents and he agrees to keep this a secret for her. So Sakura and the guy start to hang out more and they grow close into a relationship and bond that is hard to describe. Sakura says throughout the series, if someone in the past had a part of their body that wasn't well, they would eat the corresponding part of another animal. So in this case, she wishes she could get better by eating someone's pancreas. These two characters are so wildly different from one another that it was hard to see how they would grow close. Sakura is so outgoing and bubbly while our male character seems to not have too many words to say and is quite uninterested in many things in life. But despite Sakura being so outgoing, she still maintains a very mysterious presence because we're not shown exactly what she's thinking. This makes the ending so much more impactful and memorable. 
I truly was not okay for a couple days after reading this and I tried really hard not to get any tears onto the pages. Um, I just really loved this beauty and tragedy of a series and wish I could experience it for the first time. Despite it being sad just based on the premise of the story, the series is so, so worth reading. And I really hope that you guys will get to enjoy and experience this journey of Sakura and the male character together. And this series is only two volumes available in an omnibus edition in English, making it super accessible, easy to buy, not too expensive, quick but so memorable series. Truly one of my favorites this year. All right, for our last series of this list, we have a fantasy magic series, Witch Hat Atelier. This series takes you into such an intricate and delicate world of magic and does such a great job at developing an intense storyline while keeping things magical and fun. The story begins with Coco, an enthusiastic and eager child who has always been mesmerized by witches and magic. In this world, only witches are able to practice magic, very clear distinction between witches and humans. Witches practice their magic in secret and in private, according to very strict rules. Therefore, Coco obviously takes any chances that she can get to see this magic play out in person. She ends up spying on a certain witch and starts testing out what she saw using an old magic book that she bought from a mysterious witch a long time ago. However, the spells that she innocently tests out ends up destroying her home and harming the people around her. And this witch around the area, the one that Coco spied on, ends up saving Coco and ends up taking her on as his apprentice of sorts for her to learn magic and improve. This witch does this because he believes that Coco herself holds clues into finding the Brimmed Caps, a group of people that practice forbidden dangerous magic that need to be confronted and stopped. It may all sound kind of confusing at first, but trust me, this series does such a great job at introducing everything at such a manageable pace and all the characters are just so well developed, even just within the first several volumes. And I would say that the most mesmerizing thing about this series is the art. You put a series about magic together with some of the most amazing art you've ever seen, that's a killer move right there. This art is just so unique and different from traditional manga, but it works so well for this series and this particular world. And it's even more perfect how in this series spells are performed by drawings. So there are no weird chantings or waving of a wand, but rather drawing certain symbols are able to create different spells. And this just makes for such a wonderful experience since you can actually visually see the spells happen. This series is delightfully cute with our young protagonists, but it also deals with dark magic and the concept of magic and responsibility overall. It touches upon who is allowed to use this magic in society and how this magic should be managed overall if you're given this responsibility. And so these are problems that require a long journey and many experiences to figure out, and that's exactly what Witch Hat Atelier offers, a breathtaking and mysterious world of magic. So I've actually only read up to volume four, so half of what's published and out right now, but I highly recommend this already as one of my top fantasy mangas of this year, and I really, really cannot wait to collect the rest of this and to continue reading it. Yay, so we have come to the end of this video, and as you guys probably noticed, I seem to go a lot between comedic romance and then psychological horror. So let me know if you'd like me to make more genre-specific recommendations in the future. It was so hard for me to pick out my favorites because I have a bajillion, um, so I have a lot more that I like to recommend you guys. So if you guys are interested in a part two or just any more specific recommendations, please comment down any video ideas you have for that below. But as for now, I hope that you guys got at least one series that you've never read before from this video. Um, and yeah, I just hope you all have a happy reading year into 2022 and that you can't wait to grow my collection and read more with you guys. So have a great day, have a great holiday season, happy new year, and see you all soon.